On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you inside writer and editor Diana Pearl's 600 square foot Manhattan apartment, inspired by an English country cottage. Refinishing the apartment's original hardwood floors, wallpapering the bedroom, and painting the walls in a sophisticated yet feminine pink brought Diana's vision to life. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Diana. Welcome to my West Village apartment. Come on in. Hi, my name is Diana Pearl, and we are in my one bedroom, 600 square foot apartment in the West Village in downtown Manhattan. I am a writer and editor um, at a fashion industry trade publication. I have worked in media my whole career. I've lived in New York for about nine years um, and spent some time working in advertising trade, in women's lifestyle media, and then I also spent three years working at People Magazine where I did a lot of reporting on the royal family, which is also a huge personal passion of mine and one you see highlighted throughout my apartment. Um, like I said, I've lived in New York for nine years. I moved here right after college. I always wanted to move to New York. I feel like my whole life was like lived in service of the goal of like getting me to New York. Um, so now to like own a place here feels like the accumulation of like a lifelong dream and especially in the West Village, which is one of my favorite neighborhoods in the city and having my friends upstairs too, it feels like um, we're kind of in like an episode of Friends in real life. The benefits of living in a small space, I would say, are that it forces you to make tough decisions. I'm definitely someone who like has a lot of sentimental value in my objects. I love picking up things when I travel, even things like, like my old couch. I feel like I had a lot of sentimental value in that, and when I gave it away, I was like, I had a, an emotional experience. So it forces you to have to be tough. There's only so many things you can hold on to. You know, you can't have like a closet with too much stuff because there's just simply not enough room. Um, so I think in that it like sort of dissuades some of my hoarder tendencies. Um, I would say the disadvantages are just the side of that. You cannot have like too much stuff and you have to get really creative with how you store things. I'm lucky enough here I do have four closets and after living with a roommate for eight years, um, it's definitely like way, way more space I had than I've ever had before to store my stuff. I always joke like I don't know how I like where I kept my stuff before I moved in here and I thought I would have all this extra space but you feel it pretty quickly but yeah I would say it just forces you to be really creative this is my foyer it's quite petite but that's very common by New York standards I have my storage closet and my coat closet here and then I think the real like centerpiece of it is this painting print piece of art I have that I actually found on the street in Brooklyn I used to live in Brooklyn and my street was like a hotbed for stooping which is like when you can find things out on people's stoops i found shoes two working dyson vacuums one of which i still have and like furniture and this art piece of art was one of my best finds um i just think it's so pretty it has the nice blue it even came in this nice gold frame um and it really worked well in my current space so it came with me um, across the river next we can go into the kitchen this is a little galley kitchen which is another very common new york trope it is not big. If I stand here and put my arms across, that's the length of it. But despite um, the size, it honestly like works pretty well. I have some nice counter space and pretty high cabinets. My pantry is back here and it's literally tiny, like six inches the whole way around. <laughs> um, very small, but I've added some more shelves to make more use of it. Um, the kitchen is probably the thing that looks the most different from when I first moved into the apartment. I did like a mini kitchen renovation. I didn't knock down any of the structure or change the appliances, but we got new cabinet doors, new countertop, new sink. And the sink is probably my favorite change we made because the previous sink was like a, an overmount or had like a long lip and really took up a lot of the counter space. Um, and when you have such small counter space, truly every inch matters. So this undermount sink gave me back probably like two inches of counter space on each side. So very happy to have that. And if you look in, you can still see um, what color the cabinets used to be. It was this like brown and the countertop was like a green. It was very 2000s. It wasn't a good look. And I just felt like in a, such a small space, I wanted it to be like bright and light. There's no actual natural light in here. So you kind of like had to create it with the 
countertop and the cabinets. And then the color in the kitchen really just comes from, I have quite a few magnets. It's one of the things I like picking up when I travel from everywhere from Montauk to Vienna, to Michigan, to La Jolla, California. I just think it's like a fun, I don't know, I've always really liked magnets. And then this painting is actually painted by my grandma. Yeah. And it covers my fuse box, so it's multi-purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely am a New Yorker that cooks. I feel like it's a thing that New Yorkers only order delivery, but that gets expensive fast. So yes, I cook. And the big thing is I have a dishwasher. So even in this small kitchen, there's a dishwasher, which I've never had in my adult life before. And I don't know how I lived without it. It is truly a game changer. <laughs> my home decor sense of style, I would say definitely leans feminine. I mean, I think like you're hit with it when you first walk in here, it's pink walls, it's floor wallpaper. There's even a pink bathroom, which wasn't my choice, but it definitely goes with the overall vibe. Um, but I would say relatively classic. I definitely can lean towards those sort of grand millennial trends. I love um, prints. I like, you know, sort of those classic details. Um, I would say that I kind of wanted to make this place feel like I'm quite an Anglophile. So I wanted to make it feel like an English countryside cottage, but in the city. So I didn't want it to feel like too dated or too, you know, like, like it actually was an English countryside cottage but having some of those inspirations, but still like an apartment for a 30 year old single woman living in New York. So kind of like bringing those two vibes together of like modern and cosmopolitan, but also classic and sort of British inspired. I have been an Anglophile, I would say basically my entire life. And you probably see it come through the most in my love of the royal family. I'm like deeply, deeply passionate about the royal family. I have a lot of thoughts, opinions. Um, it's like one of my favorite things to read about. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. I feel like every conversation I have um, with a, someone I first meet, it's like one of the first things com that comes up because it's just something they've like heard about me or, you know, they, I feel like everybody also has opinions about it. So when they talk to me, it's like, oh, this is a good time to get those opinions out and, and get someone else's take. Um, so yeah, I would say I've spent a lot of time in London. I studied abroad there in college. My best friend who actually now lives in my building, um, lived there for two years, and she and her husband were very generous and let me stay with them for a few months at a time. So I've traveled all over the UK. I actually work for a British company now. Um, so there's a lot of like British influences in my life and I try to go at least once a year. So I feel like that's just a place I've spent a lot of time. I really just love the overall like aesthetic vibe there. Like there's nothing that like brings me more joy than just walking down the streets of London. <laughs> now we're in my office area. And I have this big 12 by 20 room and I sort of view it as divided into three parts, the office, the living area, and the dining space. This is the office. Um, obviously the focal point here is the desk. Uh, I probably wouldn't have had a desk pre-COVID. Um, I'd never had a desk pre-COVID, but now I work from home from time to time. So it's important to have. Um, I think my favorite thing about this office space is my bulletin board. I've always had a bulletin board either like in my room or in my apartment since I was like a little kid. I think it's just a nice way to display little knickknacks. I'm a big like collector and saver of tickets and postcards and photos and just little like tchotchkes. And I feel like this is a place where you can kind of just throw them all up there. So I wouldn't say I was super intentional about the way I did it, but like layered the back with postcards and then kind of just put photos and other little things on top of it. The most notable, I would say, is my royal ornament collection. Um, they sell these at like royal palace gift shops. This one is from William and Kate's wedding. It was the one that started it all. Um, but then I have one for Harry and Meghan's wedding, one for when the queen became the longest reigning monarch. One is just like a Princess Diana themed one. And then one was for the queen's platinum jubilee. Um, but yeah, it's just like a nice little mix of, of pins and other things and I don't know, little like sentimental things as well. Um, and I have my little quirky keychain there as well. Um, and these prints I just saw online and they're, I, they're all vintage from Vogue or Vanity Fair and I'm a big magazine person. So I thought it was nice to incorporate a little bit of that vibe as well. Um, and then this table I actually bought A because the color worked, but B it's 10 inches wide. And there are not a lot of entryway tables out there that are that thin, um, so it really works perfectly in this space. When I first got it, I had to wait six months because it was like peak COVID furniture delays and one of the legs was broken off and then I had to wait another like four months to get a replacement. So when it finally arrived, I was very, very happy to have it and just keep everything here, phone, keys. Um, 
lipsticks, etc. So I can just dash out the door and have all my stuff. I can be a little scatterbrained. So nice to have like know where your stuff is always going to be. And I have another, this is for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, a little plate. You'll find the little touches of ro the royal family everywhere throughout the apartment. I would say that my like love of a uh, dynastic family goes beyond the royal family. I mean, obviously the British royal family is like the height of the obsession, but royal families throughout the world I'm interested in, and also royal families in history or pseudo royal families. Um, I also have this plate. It's a, I got it at a vintage shop in San Francisco like 10 years ago, and it's JFK and Jackie, um, ashtray, and I love it. And it was only, I still have the price tag on here. It was only $25, so quite a good find um, for my, especially for my like 20, 21 year old, 20 year old budget. <laughs> now we're in my living area. Um, I would say the focal points here are, is this coffee table, which is actually a hand-me-down from my friend's grandmother. My friend's grandmother gave it to her. She was moving and didn't have room for it, so I took it. Um, I believe it's from the 60s or 70s. It's like not quite the vibe, I feel like, of the rest of my apartment. It's a little like, it's a little more mid-century than the rest of my apartment, but I love the gold, I love the glass. I feel like it's big without feeling like it takes up too much space. Um, and then this couch, which actually is also a hand-me-down from my best friend and her husband who live upstairs, and they got a new couch, so we did a little couch switcheroo. My couch left and their couch came downstairs. Um, but I love it. I feel like, I mean, it fits the vibe of the place perfectly. So I was very lucky to have that handed down. That piece of art I actually found on Facebook Marketplace. I knew I wanted something big above the couch. And I really, when I was like looking at the colors for this space, it all kind of came down to this rug. And I was trying to just pull from the different colors in the rug. So you have the pink on the walls, the gray, um, the blues, those are on the couch and the chair. And I saw this piece of art on Facebook Marketplace. I was like, that's like if my rug was a painting. Um, and it was only $60 and normally big art can be quite expensive. And I also liked that the paint is like kind of coming, it's three dimensional. I think it added some nice like texture to the space. Um, and I love it, even though I do think it's got kind of like an 80s vibe. I have some friends who have said like, oh, my parents had something like that in the 80s or in the 90s. But you know what, I like, you know, bringing different time periods into my abode. Um, and then these pictures actually I got at Portobello Market in London, which is like one of the best antique vintage markets in the world, I would say. Um, I just thought they were pretty. And then over here is my bookshelf. And the real standout portion here is my royal mug collection. This is my pride and joy. It's been building up for about 10 years. Um, and I have them going all the way back to Queen Victoria. This is the Queen Victoria one. It's my favorite. It's for her Diamond Jubilee in 1897. Um, so very <laughs> fragile. I'm very protective of it. But I mean, it just like really speaks to the history. It says the empire on which the sun never sets. So obviously very dated, but I kind of love it. I mean, it's like living, not living, but it's like a piece of history right in my apartment. You can get them for like 15, 20 pounds. They're not like too hard to find. I wouldn't say you find Queen Victoria ones every day, but you can find other ones, like especially from like the early years of the Queen's reign, you can find those pretty easily. But the other one I feel like is really special is this is from King Edward VIII, who is, um, if any fans of the crown know, he is the queen's uncle who abdicated the throne after less than a year and he never was actually king and he never had a coronation. So this is a mug for an event that never happened. So I have them for every monarch yet going back to Queen, of queen Victoria, including him, which I'm very impressed by. And then also um, every like modern royal occasion, including one for King Charles's coronation. <laughs> which I already ordered. I saw it was available and I was like, boom, done. Um, and you do have to pay a little bit of a shipping fee to get it from the UK, but you know, worth it. This is like what I collect, so I think it's fine to, to invest in. Yes, I love that one. That was actually a gift from a friend. And so I do feel like this stuff just like shows up in my home. Like this little corgi down here was a gift and you know, people just, they know I like it, so. And to speak also to my love of other royal families, this is a little statue of Sisi, the Empress of Austria from the late 1800s. I spent about a month in Vienna at the end of last year. Uh, so I picked that up while I was there. Those are from Hill House and they're just so fun and I wore them on my 30th birthday. So it felt like it was just, they were too cute and too fun to like keep them tucked away um, in the closet. And I needed something to, you know, go with the corgi. Another fun thing I have down here is my Playbill collection. I have been saving every Playbill from every show I've seen since I was 12 and I'm a huge Broadway fan. So that's a lot of shows. 
Down here are just the ones I've had since I moved to the city, but it's still nine years worth of playbills. So it's quite a few. My favorite one is actually this one. It's from my favorite show, The Phantom of the Opera. And I got to see it on the returning night on Broadway post COVID. So it has this special little gold seal. Um, so definitely something I will cherish forever. This is my gallery wall. Like any true millennial, I'm a lover of a gallery wall. I've had one in every apartment I've lived in in New York, including this one. Obviously the center here is the frame TV. I feel like most people are familiar with it at one point, um, at this point, but I love it. And I think it just like, A, it's, it's A, the number one thing I get compliments on, I feel like. People are just like, well, that TV, what is it? Um, and the picture I actually have on it is a photo I took when I was in Positano. And throughout the gallery wall, I have some other of my photographs from various travels. This is from London in Notting Hill. That's from Cornwall in England. That little one up there is from Anansi in France, Charleston, and then Bondi Beach in Sydney. And then the rest are just like a mix. The map of London I got when I was studying abroad in 2013. The little butterfly I got on the street in Soho. This is another one of my grandma's paintings. And that is actually just a wallpaper sample from when I was testing wallpapers for my bedroom. I was like, I got, I probably got 40 of them. So I was like, I'll just save one and frame it. Um, and then this is a little extension of my Royal Mug collection. These are some of my favorites. I have William and Kate's wedding, which is really like the mug that started it all. Charles and Diana's wedding. And then that one's for the Platinum Jubilee. And then this is my most recent edition. Um, the Buckingham Palace gift shop just came out with this in like honor of the queen's life. So it's a pretty one. And I feel like the ones that the like actual gift shop makes always look a little bit nicer. <laughs> the blue chair is honestly like doesn't have the most incredible story. It's just from Target, but Target has good home stuff. And I had four and a half months from when I offered on this place to when I closed. So I spent a lot of time like looking online for different furniture pieces and thinking about how I was gonna dine this apartment. And this chair just kept coming up. I knew I wanted to have some additional seating. And then the blanket on is actually from Morocco and my friends got it as a gift for me as a thank you for watching their cat while they were out of town. And here we have the dining area, sort of the last of the three portions of my like great room or main room or whatever you wanna call it. I would say the focal point of this is the dining table. With each of the three little mini spaces, I tried to have like a darker piece that would kind of like anchor it. So here it's the table, in the living room it's the couch, in the office it's the desk. Um, and I thought this just gave me like a French bistro kind of vibe. I like the cane. It's obviously very trendy right now, but you know, I, I can appreciate a trend. Um, and then this vase I actually just got when I was in Cornwall in England in 2019. And it was a little tough to put in a carry-on suitcase home, but I made it work. Um, and it's really nice, obviously, in New York to have a full-size dining table. Um, I live alone, so I wouldn't say it's full constantly, but it's nice to have the option. Um, and definitely, you know, better than just like a little bistro table. On this bookshelf is just sort of coffee table books and other little knickknacks. One of my favorite things I have on here is this bust of Matthew McBadden, who's an actor um, who played Mr. Darcy in the 2005 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. I got this at the Chatsworth gift shop, which is a house that they used as Pemberley in the movie. When I saw it, I was like, I have to have it. Um, again, taking that home from England was not the easiest, but I did it. Um, you also might recognize him from Succession. He plays Tom Wamsgams. Um, so it's always funny when people come and they see that and they're like, is that who I think it is? <laughs> um, but such a fun little, I don't know, touch. And like, if you don't know, if you know, you know, I feel like. And then up here, I actually have another little royal. This is for um, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip's 70th anniversary. And it's a little like pillbox, but just cute. I kind of feel like I've always had it. I like joke and say I didn't outgrow my princess phase as a kid. Um, but then I went to London for the first time when I was 13 and we went to Windsor Castle and Hampton Court. And I feel like that's really like what spurred it. And then William and Kate's wedding like set it into overdrive. And it kind of like hasn't really calmed down since. And it's definitely like a big part of my personality and everybody like wants to talk to me about it. and. I don't know, people say like in this apartment, it's like I like threw up all over it because it's like <laughs> just, you know, royal stuff everywhere. But I don't know, I think it's like good that your home feels like you. I would say that my favorite thing in my home is the wallpaper in my bedroom. It was like one of the number one things I knew I wanted to do if I bought an apartment was wallpaper, the whole bedroom. 
I just felt I could never justify doing that in a rental, even the peel and stick. It just seemed like a lot of effort for a place that you might have to leave in a year or that sort of thing. I really commend people who like put in that level of effort to their rentals because I never could get myself there. But when I bought, I was like, all right, it's time for the wallpaper. And I just love it. I think it's it has like a cream sort of backdrop, but then has pink and green flowers and um, leaves all over it. So I think it has like a nice pop of color without being too busy. And it really makes my bedroom just feel like an English countryside cottage in a way that I just adore. This is my bedroom. I think that initially this apartment probably was a studio. So someone just added these like glass walls and, and this door, um, but it's nice. It really provides a lot of light. This is my first apartment actually where I've had um, a light like a window in my living room and so to have this much natural light in my space is really amazing um it's not the world's biggest bedroom but my bed only touches one wall so in new york i count that as a win and my favorite thing here is the wallpaper it's from william Mor morris which is a british brand um, that has a lot of heritage i think it's been around for like over 100 years um, so it feels to me very like classically british and this is the space that i feel like feels the most english countryside cottage vibe which I like wanted to capture that in some of the some of the space and there's parts that i think really add to that the pictures on the wall or the prints on the wall are from um, portobello road market in london um they're over 100 years old each so they definitely have the more of that vintage vibe both of these are actually houses in the uk that i visited the top one is chatsworth um, and then the bottom one is wentworth woodhouse up in yorkshire and then these are also little knickknacks I got at Portobello. You can tell whenever I'm in London, I run and, and go shop there. It's just like the best market. Um, and then of course have my God Save the Queen bill. <laughs> but I tried to bring in some modern details. I have um, this mirror, which felt like, you know, it ha wasn't a complete, you know, ornate vintage style. Um, again, like I'm not actually living in the English countryside, I'm living in Manhattan. So I wanted to make sure it still felt relatively modern. Um, so I bought, so I had some freedom to be able to really make some changes. I was able to do everything um, without having to get board approval. So it was all sort of like cosmetic changes. And I always say it was like a mini renovation. Um, what the first thing I did was I refinished the floors. Before the floors were like a really dark wood. The floors are a parquet and they're original to the building. Um, it's the building was built in 1966, so it's not quite like it's not like a beautiful pre-war, you know, old oak or oak floors. But they are original to a building, the building, which I guess is a nice detail. But they were this really dark color. Some of them were like warped with water, um, like not in great shape. So refinish those. Um, and then after the like first day of the process, I got a call being like, we have to replace 20 percent of them because they were that damaged. Um, so that was like a first fun first lesson in home ownership. <laughs> um, but then I did a, like a lighter walnut stain and I think it just makes the whole space feel a lot lighter. Um, and just like A, the floors also look so much better. Like I said, some of them were water damaged and it looks a lot, lot better now. And then I painted the walls pink. Uh, the pink is Pink Ground by Pharaoh and Ball. Um, it's like my favorite pink. It's just, I feel like a nice, like sophisticated pink, not too like little girl. And those were the big changes I made. Oh, and I got the container store to come in and like zhuzhify the closets because in New York, living in a small space, you really need to like maximize every inch. So I converted one of the, I had two coat closets initially. I have a lot of coats, but not quite that many. So I converted one into like a storage closet. I would joke that my apartment has a Carrie Bradshaw layout, meaning you walk through your closets to get to the bathroom. Sadly, my closets are not as big as Carrie's, but I had the container store, you know, container storeify them. So I've managed to make them pretty useful and have a lot of, you know, storage in there. Um, and then my bathroom is very pink. This is also original to the building. Um, and I feel like it's a classic New York style to have these like bright tiles. My previous bathroom actually was all blue. So now I'm doing all pink. I like to say it's vintage, not dated. Um, and the pink is really fun. You definitely can tell there's been like a little bit of wear and tear, but it's just such a fun color that you kind of didn't need to do that much more. Like it's very bold on its own. The one thing is that a bathroom from the 1960s obviously is going to be pretty slim on the storage. When I first moved in, all I had was the medicine cabinet. I'm someone who has a lot of beauty products, so that wasn't going to be enough. There wasn't even any under sink storage. So I just got these shelves on Amazon and had a TaskRabbit come and drill them in. Um, and I've been able to, I think, really add to the storage space. So everything you could kind of need, I feel like is, is in here now. 
And I'm very, I don't know how I could have survived without those shelves. I mean, I couldn't have. And this whole medicine cabinet is full too. So <laughs> I have a lot of products. <laughs> I would say the word home for me means like a refuge and a safe space. Um, and a place that's all your own in the city. This is my first apartment where I've lived in by myself that is all my own. It's the first apartment I've owned. So this place really does feel truly like home, um, especially have, after having lived in New York for nine years, the city really feels like home. And it's so nice to have like a safe, quiet space um, in you know bustling Manhattan and it's quiet and calm in here. But then I walk outside and there's you know people everywhere and you're steps away from the subway and restaurants and all that sort of thing. So I like having that kind of contrast between, um, you know, your safe space and the city. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.